Hi ladies and gentlemen, today is May 23rd, 2014. We turned back, we, we didn't get all the way to OAS in DC. Uh, following the events that were transpiring there, which didn't all that, didn't surprise me all that much, we decided that our efforts would be better spent elsewhere. Now, just so you know, I totally support the, as I've said before, I totally support the concept uh, basically that you know go to DC the vets and and convince those in DC that they need to obey their oath, oath of office uh, and support and defend the Constitution of the United States do those things according to the Constitution which they haven't done for years but in reality voting and balloting and demonstrating like that really aren't going to accomplish much they're just not not in DC it's too far gone district of criminals pretty much explains what we have there. Looking at history and how things happen in Germany with the Nazis coming in and Russia with the Stalinists and all of this, it's so obvious what's happening here in the United States. Now, the point is, is we did go to OAS in DC. We did go to a local thing where actually there are almost probably as many people who showed up in DC. But uh, be that as it may, I want to thank those who have gone to OAS and, and tried to do the right thing. It's just, as I said before, I, I, I thought the plans were a little uh, inappropriate, I, I guess for lack of a better term. Uh, anyway, thanks for being there. Uh, we should have done it in all the states. Every, it should have been a spread out thing at, 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 any way, at any rate. And it's unfortunate that it's turned out the way it has because not only did it not get media coverage, which was deliberate, it was a blackout, but it's also embarrassed those who are trying to do the right thing. So I'll just leave it at that at this point uh, and, and move on to something else. This land grab in the West is really important, the Bundy Ranch being the pivotal uh, experience at this point. So that's where I think we need to be, and I'm going to explain why in a few minutes. But as usual, I digress and I want to go to a couple of other things really quickly. The first being that Senator Ted Cruz has now told us, if you've been listening, that there are 40 to 50 senators that have signed on to changing the Constitution and eliminating the First Amendment freedom of speech. Now, ladies and gentlemen, so you're telling me, U.S. government, and I know you want to do this, okay? You want to just do away with the Bill of Rights completely, which is pretty much what you've done any, anyway with all the things that you've, you've been working on here. But back to Bush in 2001. Oh, you know, Al-Qaeda wants to destroy us because they hate our freedoms. Well, unfortunately, the U.S. government has done more to destroy our freedoms than Al-Qaeda ever did. So the real people that want to destroy our freedoms are people who are in the U.S. government or affiliated with it in one way or another. And they have their cronies from the very top office of the, of the nation all the way down to your local water boards and school boards. It's really crazy how they've, they've done this. You might say, well, you know, that's what it is. That's, that's what the people want. Let me remind you, this is a republic, a constitutional republic, okay? Majoritarian coercion cannot take away the Bill of Rights. That's why it was built the way it was. But I know that these evil forces are in there, and they're working their hardest to make people believe that we are a total democracy and then lie about, you know, who wants what anyway but use that as a reason to, to do away with these Bill of Rights. So Senator Cruz brought this up, it doesn't surprise me. You know, we're supposedly fighting wars for how many years now in the Middle East to try to protect our rights and we had all those situations, you know, in wars before that, 50, 58, 60,000 in Vietnam we lost, not counting the the people that were, were wounded, maimed terribly. Of course, Korean War, World War II, you know, I could do all of those. All because we're supposedly supporting the liberties and freedoms of the people of the United States, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. And now we have actual government people that we have for a long time saying that we need to eliminate the First Amendment because we don't want people to disagree with us and interfere with government making all these decisions. The people are the government, and that's the idea. A Republican form of government. <laughs> 
you got to wake up. Military and police, you got to wake up and see what's happening here. You went into the military, you went into the police, hopefully, I'm not saying all, because some of you are just creepy people. Some of you are just goons and thugs. You know, criminals that wear the badge and the uniform and the gun because the government wants thugs in there. But some of you, how many I don't know anymore, went in for the right reasons, but the right reasons don't exist anymore. Okay? If, if you're fighting for the Constitution and for freedom and your own government's talking about getting rid of the First Amendment, what are you doing in the military or in the police? They're the enemy now. They're, whether, whether or not you know, it's just like the Gestapo, you know, or, or, or the Stasi, whatever. If you work for an evil entity and you're doing it for a paycheck and you're trying not to be bad, the point is you're working for an evil entity. You've got to get out of there if you have a conscience, if you're moral, if you're ethical. Do I expect you to do that? No. The destruction of this country is going to happen, and then it'll be too late. You'll realize that you made the wrong decision. <laughs> Boy, I diverge a lot. Point is, is, you've got these people that are talking about taking away the rights of people to even dissent, to even discuss whether what the government does is right or not, or portions of the government, even before the laws are made. This is really disastrous. So thanks, Senator Cruz, for bringing that up. It's very, very important. Okay, and I want to back up to this land thing again. You know, we looked at this quite deeply, and we've come to realize, and, and there are spiritual reasons as well as, as political reasons for looking at this now, that the land issue is really where it's at. The land issue, the water rights, uh, tied to grazing rights, the idea of, of prescriptive rights, which I'm not going to go into right now. The whole idea of public lands, the difference between management and ownership. Of course, the federal government through the BLM is now claiming ownership. Uh, these are evil things. This land was never to have a king over it. I'm sorry, and I know a lot of you don't even have the foggiest idea what I'm talking about. This was supposed to be a free land. Well, 80, about 85, 86% of the Nevada land, as an example, as you already know from the videos I've made, is under the control of the BLM, and they are now saying that they own that. There are now ranchers that realize how important, what well, they have for a long time. There was the Hage deal in Nye County, Nevada, where uh, the judge there actually ruled that the BLM and the Forest Service were uh, involved in a conspiracy to deprive the Hages of their rights. So there are a few people out there that are willing to stand up. The Nye County Sheriff, for instance, who told the federal government, if you come here and try to do this stuff, our SWAT team will meet yours. You know, there are some real courageous people out there, but they're not enough at the state level. And that, that's the problem. I mean, the states really need to stand up no matter how dangerous it is. Because the land issue now is the central issue tied inextricably with the Constitution of the United States. It's all the same thing. If the federal government continues down the course that it's going right now, this is, this is what's going to happen. You're going to lose all access to your, to your lands. You're going to lose food supply. You're going to lose water supply. You're going to lose any possibility of using any resources, minerals or otherwise, period. Because they are, in fact, out to destroy you. They do not represent the people of the United States. They represent corporate oligarchic interests and international interests, other nations' interests, China being one of them. The government says it owns the property, that it will disperse with the property for the benefit of the people. But, but what's that? Oh, they come up with these derivatives, make us sign on to them, all right, these debts, which are not real anyway, sell these debts to other nations, and then tell them, okay, well, if we can't pay it, you can have this chunk of land over here. Do you see what's happening? A false financial arrangement that they sign you, the taxpayer, and I use that term very loosely. I don't like the word taxpayer. There's some other connotations there, but we'll just talk about people paying taxes, that you have some responsibility, but because we can't pay for it as the taxpayers of this country, then the, the United States government, in order to continue doing its wars and all the crazy things that it does, it will sell this land over here to foreign interests. Is that really what you want, American people? I don't think so. And if it is, then you're further gone than I ever thought. So, 
We have other Nevada ranchers that are coming up and saying, yes, the BLM is after them. The BLM is using every everything they can, whether it be that the land needs a rest, which is horse manure, <laughs> or a mouse, a flying mouse, or a tortoise, or you know, some fish, or whatever it is, you know, to keep them from using the land. Your beef prices are going up even worse. All food prices will go up, for instance. Uh, Boxer and Feinstein and all those shut off the San Joaquin Valley in California from its water supply. Thousands, maybe millions of acres, at least thousands, hundreds of thousands of acres of, of produce land, orchards, are all dried up and dead. Your food supply is being stolen from you. And for what reason? A little fish? Really? So, bottom line, I think that this whole issue of the land is the central issue to retaining our rights. Because without land, you don't have a country. You don't have a way to survive. The Constitution is inextricably interwoven and connected to the land. The law of the land doesn't mean the law of the United States government. It means the common law, the law of the land, the natural law of the land. I'm not going to explain it any further than that. But the next time I hear somebody say that such and such a law is the law of the land, you don't even understand that you're under admiralty law. I'm not saying it's legal, because Marbury versus Madison said that any law that's made contrary to the United States Constitution is null and void before it even is voted on. Before And once it gets law, it's null and void. So, you know, the, 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 the corporation of the United States government in D.C. in 1871, I think it was, all that stuff where they tried to, to change the legal nature of our republic is illegal and unconstitutional and null and void when they do it. It's all wrong. The Constitution is the supreme law of the land. And that federal supremacy clause, which the BLM uses and all these federal organizations, has nothing to do with how they've implemented it. You know, very similar to the uh, Interstate Commerce Clause, how they've expanded that to mean things that was never intended. The supremacy clause of the United States Constitution is basically stating that federal law, constitutional federal law, to help the country to engage in its freedoms and liberties is the supreme law of the land. The supremacy clause, it takes precedence over a state law. For instance, if a state says, no, you, uh, we're, we're not gonna have a democratic government here, or I'm sorry, a Republican form of government, we're gonna, we're gonna have uh, uh, you know, a, a democratic form of government. That's a good example. So of having a Republican form of government, which the Constitution guarantees, we're gonna have a democratic form of government. That's when the supremacy clause of the United States Constitution comes in and the feds can say, no, 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 no. You are to have a Republican form of government because that's what we promised the people. And there are reasons for that. You don't want two wolves and a lamb deciding what's for dinner. That's called majoritarian coercion. That's true democracy. That's demonocracy. That's ruled by demons. Okay? That's why we want a Republican form of government where you have a Bill of Rights that cannot be violated, even if all the people want to violate your rights. They cannot do it. Okay? Long video here, uh, it's kind of jumped around a lot, but I just wanted you to understand that the land issue is now, I think, the big point because it interferes, it, it's, it controls so many other issues of our life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. We have to get our states to stand up against this illicit, tyrannical, authoritarian, dictatorial, illegal, unconstitutional federal government and say no. We have some heroes out here that are doing this, Senator Cruz, uh, Rick Perry, who I don't have a whole lot of trust for, did come up and try to defend the Red River area of those 90,000 acres the BLM is trying to take. And I do understand the boundary problems of the river and all that. Okay, that's not the issue. Michelle Fiore in Nevada. Utah State Legislature now saying that they want to take back the lands that the feds have in Utah. This has to be done uh, at every, uh, in every state in the West, every state legislature, every governor needs to get behind this for the benefit of the constituents of that state. The states gave the federal government certain powers to take care of the, 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 the common interest. And the federal government has usurped too much. It's time for the states to say no. 
So that's where we are going to spend most of our time. We're going to ask for God's help. I know a lot of you don't like to hear that, but we're going to ask for God's help because this land is supposed to be a liberty, a liberty land, a land of the free, freedom, a land of God. God is the king of this land, not the federal government of the United States, not President Obama, not the UN, not oligarchs, not international bankers, but God himself, one nation under God. Folks, we have to take this seriously. We have to take this very seriously. We have to ask God to step in, give us the understanding, the wisdom, the strength to resist and to overcome this evil that is threatening the very lives of your women and children, your, your families, your loved ones, your posterity. So that's where we're going, okay? Again, thanks to the people at OAS. You still have the right idea. I think trying to over, you know, get those people to, to leave office was way over the top. Not that it isn't worthy to, to ask, but it just wasn't going to happen. That's Ballots aren't going to work. Demonstrations aren't going to work like that. The only thing to get those guys out of there is, is bloodshed, and we really don't want to go there if we can avoid it. All right. On the state, local level, to, to keep the feds away from us, the county sheriffs, the state governors, you know, get back those the, the real true state militias that aren't under national guard. You know, because that makes them nationalized, right? Uh, they need to fall just under the states. We need to get back to states here. I, I realize the difficulties with this and how how dangerous it is in a lot of respects. But if we don't curtail what this federal government is doing, there's not going to be anything left for any of you. Okay, so we're going back to the land issue. God and the common law is tied to the land, the law of the land. I'll explain more later. Thanks for listening. I <laughs> got a little verbose again this time out here.